Welcome to part seven of our Galaga tutorial here in Godot. In the last part, we uh, made it so that we could clean up the enemies if they leave the screen. In this part, we're actually going to add in some fences for the player. If I actually run the game, so let's take a look where we are here. If I actually run the game right now, what you might notice is that when the game runs, I can actually leave the screen with my player. I can go off in any direction. And that's not, that's not the behavior that we want here for your player. We want the player to be limited to stay on the screen. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Again, like with anything else, there's many different ways to do this. This is not necessarily always the best way, but it is a way that's good enough for us right now, so it should work quite nicely. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create a fence that the player can't go through and let the uh, physics engine handle it from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our map scene. Again, this makes a lot of sense to do in our map scene because our map is handling a lot of other things here. So I'm going to add a static body 2D. A static body is a type of physics object that can't be moved. So it stays where it is. It doesn't move. The physics doesn't need to calculate if this body is going to move, like if you, uh, you know, it collided or if it needs to account for momentum or that sort of stuff. It's just static. It's just going to say stay there. Um, so, I'm going to create a static body 2D. I'm going to rename this border fence like that. And then I'm going to add a collision shape 2D child to this one. My collision shape 2D, uh, I'm going to add a rectangle to this one here. Like that. And I'm just going to make it just a little bit bigger than the uh, screen there. So I'm actually going to make this about, let's say, 650. And then I'm going to make it about 10 wide. So it's going to be nice and small here. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll do 20. Um, I actually want this to be just off screen. So I can move this up just a little bit here. I could go to my transform, and I'm actually going to set this to minus 10 and 300. Uh, sorry, 300, there we go, so that this is centered and it's guaranteed at the edge of the screen here. It's 20 wide, so I'm going to set it to minus 10 so it lines up really nicely there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start my next step. I'm going to go, I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to move the collision shape down here. If I hold shift, I can drag it straight down. But again, my transform, I'm going to put 810 which is 10 off the bottom. Uh, you may notice I did not make the shape unique for this one. I don't have to because the top and the bottom are going to be exactly the same size. For the next, I'm going to do the left and the right here. So I'm going to move this over. Yeah, let's put it here. I'm going to make this shape unique here so that it uh, lines up nicely. And I already know that it's going to need to be 803. Uh, 20 wide and 850 tall. And then the transform is going to be minus 10 and 400 so that it lines up exactly where I want it to be there. Okay. So that's uh, 20 and 850 for the size of the rectangle and then minus 10, 400 for the position of that one. And then I'm going to duplicate this sucker here and get it right over there. And it's just going to be 610. So what I've got here is I've got a border which lines up around my play area. And it is pixel perfect to the edge of this play area. This is our fence here. We've got all these collision shapes here. And what I want to do now is I'm actually going to go and um, uh, lock it so that I can't move these nodes individually here. Like I can't move them because this now lines up perfectly for our borders. That's kind of exactly what we want. But this border fence should only collide with our player. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the collision object here. I'm going to go and I'm going to set this on layer 3 so that it is on the borders layer here. We set those names in the uh, last tutorial. And I'm going to set this so that it can collide with the player. It cannot collide with the enemy here which is exactly what I want. I do not want the enemy to be allowed to collide with the uh, border here. Okay. Uh, we need to go now to our player. So I still have the player tab open. I'm going to go to the player's uh, character body here, and I'm going to go down to collision. 
And I'm going to tell the player that it can indeed collide with um, the player, and it can collide with the enemies here. The player's on layer one. It can collide with layer two and three. It can't collide with itself. If I go to the enemy, the enemy is on layer two, and it can collide with layer one. That's all that it's worried about. Okay? The, uh, the border fence here is on layer three, and it can collide with layer one. That's all that I'm worried about. The remove area we set so that it is um, it actually is on no layer here, although it doesn't really matter. It can be on any, it can be on borders as well, um, because the player is never going to be able to get there. But the the remove area can only collide with enemies. Yeah. So these are our collision layers set up now, our physics layers set up for these. And if I look at this, that should be all I need. Bonk. There we go. The player just bonks into the side of the screen and can't exit from there. And that's that's all I want. If you actually look, the enemies are quite happily off. Can I push them off? Nope, not really. Not really. There you go. Hooray. Okay. That's all we've got there. And Take, let's take a look at the next tutorial. Our next tutorial, we're going to get our player shooting here. It's going to be a next uh, doozy of a tutorial. See you guys in the next one.